Good afternoon and welcome again to the Trendsoft GC year-end closed webinar. As I said earlier, my name is Bobby Haggard. I'm one of the consultants here at Trendsoft. A few housekeeping notes before we get started. I went ahead and put all of our phones on mute, try and cut down on some of the background noise. Um, if you have a question, which we certainly do encourage, uh, just ask it and use the chat feature and we will certainly answer that. If it's a question that is more pertinent to your organization, uh, we might uh, follow up in a, with an email or a call uh, um, after the webinar. Uh, additionally, at the end of the webinar, if time permits, like I said, we'll take questions. Um, additionally, if you'd like a copy of these presentation slides, I'd be happy to share those with you. Just let me know. My email and phone number will be shown at the end. Just shoot me a quick email, and uh, we'll be happy to send these slides to you. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get started with our Dynamics GP year in webinar. Our agenda is fairly straightforward. We'll start by going over a few pre-closed steps that we recommend. Next, we will uh, go over the general overview of the GP closed process. We'll discuss the order of operations and closing the various modules. Uh, we'll go over each of those in the individual modules and discuss what the system is going to be doing uh, when you run the closed process. And we'll give you a couple key tips and points to keep in mind. And then finally, as I said, we'll have uh, some time for questions, hopefully at the end. All right, so before the actual closing steps, there's a few pre-closed steps or routines that we encourage our clients to perform. First, make sure that all of your invoices, batches, adjustments, et cetera, related to the year end uh, that you're closing are entered and posted. Next, we encourage you to perform a quick review of your account type setup um, for balance sheet and profit and loss accounts set up or, uh, that they're set up appropriately. Uh, it's a really easy way to do this. Just run a quick smart list, uh, review your account number and the account type that's set up as, just to ensure you don't have any balance sheet accounts that are flagged as accounts uh, as profit or loss that might go to a uh, net to retain earnings or a profit and loss account flagged as balance sheet that may uh, end up with a balance forward account at the end of the year. So again, quick way to do that, run a smart list and make the updates. If you do need to uh, make an update to an account, you do that here through the account maintenance window. Uh, you see I've highlighted the posting type there uh, in yellow, and that's where you would make that adjustment. Uh, the next thing you, we would encourage you to do before we close, go ahead and set up the new fiscal year uh, that you're going to be performing. Uh, just navigate to the uh, fiscal period setup window, enter the year, start and end date for that year, and then the number of periods, and then just like calculate, and that will generate your periods. We would encourage you to be sure to save any of your key reports, so if you have some different reconciliation type reports or some other balance or deal type reports that uh, you just want to save as a snapshot view before performing the close, um, that's a, a key time to do that. Uh, next, we would encourage you to verify with any of your third party products, whether it's an add on or an ISP type product, just to be sure there's nothing in the close process that, that needs to be handled separately uh, from, the, from them. Uh, we would obviously encourage you to take a backup of the database. Um, if you have any questions on taking that back up, uh, please contact your Trendsoft uh, consultant. We'll be happy to walk you through that or take that backup for you. And then finally, once you have that backup, we would actually encourage you to load it into a test company and actually perform a, a trial run or a test run of closing the company. It's a good time to iron out any kinks or kind of things to be aware of during the actual close of the live company database. Again, if you have any questions, with this process or you run into an issue during the test close, please reach out to your Trendsoft team and we'll be happy to jump in and uh, take a look and, and get you going back on the right direction. So now let's dig into the actual GP year and close uh, process. So as you begin to close the year, it's important to note that the order of closing these various modules is important. Microsoft recommends, recommends that the order as outlined here from top to bottom. First is payroll. Payroll is its own module and it's independent of the other areas. But it's always done at the end of the year, uh, calendar year. After payroll, we'll start by closing the inventory module, followed by receivables, payables, fixed assets, and a local accounting. Uh, once the other modules are closed, we'll, we will go ahead and close the general ledger uh, module. It's important to note that the analytical accounting is only a separate close if you're on an older version of GP. Uh, the newer versions of GP, um, it's built in and it's included in general ledger close. Uh, a few things to keep in mind here. When you're looking for the various closed steps and processes, they're usually located under the routines uh, pane, uh, menu group, and that functional area. And then, if you again, if you need any assist, uh, assistance with these steps, please let us know. Uh, additionally, Microsoft has a really good documentation um, and customer source that will help walk through close for you as well. 
All right, so let's get started and dive quickly into each of the modules here within GT. First is payroll. As I mentioned, payroll is its own module. Uh, and so for clients running payroll, it's important that the first couple, that you first complete all payrolls for the current year. Once you complete, uh, you'll need to install the latest tax updates. Uh, this is similar to applying a service tax update. Uh, when you perform the closed process and payroll, this will create a year-end file which can be used to create a W-2. These W-2 reports can then be processed manually, manually or filed uh, directly through the green check. We also uh, encourage our clients to really do some planning in this area to be sure you allow some extra time for testing and be sure that you can run that first payroll properly and thoroughly uh, in the new year. Uh, let's quickly hit on W-2s here within GP. First, let's make sure that um, you have the latest payroll tax updates running uh, in your instance. In this instance, it'll be for the 2019 calendar year. Uh, next, you'll want to process all payrolls and be sure that you've posted uh, for the current year. Uh, the user will then want to complete all payroll-related procedures for the month end, quarter end, uh, just as they normally would. Once you're completed with your final payroll, you'll want to install the year-end update. The user will then create and verify that the year-end file is created, and then the user can install uh, the year-end update. Once that's done, the payroll tax update, you'll want to up, uh, install the updates for 2020 year-end and then create and verify your year and file. The last step here is to go ahead and close your fiscal periods for the payroll series. This will prevent any user from mistakenly posting into the wrong calendar year. Now before closing the year for inventory module, be sure that all of your inventory related transactions have been posted. This will include invoicing, sales order processing, inventory transactions, uh, such as cycle counts, physical count adjustments, et cetera. Be sure all of those are posted. Uh, prior to closing the inventory module. Now when this routine uh, runs uh, within GP, the, it will transfer all summarized current year quantity, the transaction history, the items for which you've been keeping a summarized sales history. The quantity sold field for each item is reset to zero, and the closed process also updates the quantity in each item's beginning quantity field to the quantity on hand for each site. Finally, there's an option when performing close to clean up um, discounted items and lot attributes for these items. Again, it's the optional checkbox. Just keep that in mind prior to doing that. Uh, again, it's important to keep in mind that uh, the users keep in mind during the inventory module year and close. There is no true year and close report for inventory. So this is where to see if there's specific reports or uh, snapshots you want to take that uh, prior to close. And then just like in the payroll module, um, the last step is to be sure you close the fiscal period for this specific module, again, preventing any users from mistakenly posting into the wrong year. All right, uh, before performing the close for receivables, again, be sure everything's posted, all your sales or receivable batches are posted, and there's none, of, none are hung uh, that might have some transactions. Now, once all your current year activity and transactions are posted, we recommend that you run a customer trial balance and rec reconcile to the GL quickly. Um, and then save that. When you per actually perform the close, the user is now ready to complete their year in routine. When the routine runs, the system will clear the calendar year to date finance charges, along with several other year to date or current year uh, fields, and move them into the last year calendar field for that respective area. It's important to note here that there are some smart list objects and summary reports that have some date sensitivity, um, so you might want to be sure you take a closer look at those when you start uh, your 2020 year analysis. Finally, just like in payroll and inventory, uh, once the receivables module is closed, jump into your fiscal period and close the sales transactions. Again, trying to prevent any of these long period entries. All right, for payables, it's very similar to receivables. Um, again, be sure that you have posted all your transactions and matches for the current year. Uh, run and activity and transaction reports are reconciled. Uh, run a vendor trial balance, reconciled to the GL. And then once you perform that close, very similar to receivables, uh, it's going to move everything from last close to last year. And there's the same objects with the smart list objects and those have some date sensitivity. Then there's the same comment about uh, closing the fiscal period for the sales side. All right, let's quickly cover 1099 reporting. Uh, first, it's important to note that 1099 process is not connected to your year and close process. So you can complete your year and close and then come back at a later time and date to work on your 1099. It's important to know that 1099s can be printed manually through GP, 
or if you're using the Green Shade third party software, it can be pr uh, printed through there as well. Now, within GP, it's important uh, to note that uh, we encourage our vendors to set their client vendors up correctly from the start. Um, so we encourage you to ask for a W9 upfront. As a reminder, the vendor 1099 setup is done through the vendor maintenance window. Uh, if you go to that window and then you select the options button in the lower right corner, it'll open this vendor maintenance option window. And then here you can see I've highlighted the 1099 field. So if there are any vendors that you mistakenly set up during the year, this is where you can go and correct that or update that as needed. Now, uh, users do have the ability to manually edit 1099 amounts if needed throughout the year. That's done through the 1099 details window. Um, we do encourage, again, it can be done here, but we do strongly encourage our clients to be sure we try and set this up uh, correctly throughout the year. Now, once uh, 1099 is set up in the fleet, you can, again, print your option uh, 1099 through GP under the routines pane, or you can use screen shades. If you are using the routines pane, it looks like this. Uh, you would just enter your uh, federal ID number, uh, enter your 1099 year and type, and if there's any type of form, uh, you need to select that. And then if you're narrowing down by vendors, you would select that as well. And then you would just hit print. All right, fixed assets modules should not be closed until payables modules have been fully closed first. If you have multiple fixed assets books, you can close them each separately. However, each book must be closed prior to closing the general ledger. Again, prior to closing the fixed asset module, be sure to post any additions, charges, transfers, retirements, any outstanding depreciation, et cetera, for the current year. Fixed assets close routine will clear year to date fields in the current year. Uh, it'll clear costs and life to date depreciation will be updated. This would include uh, reserves, salvage values, et cetera. Finally, in the current fiscal year, it's updated to the next year. Again, any key aspects to know about the fixed asset module is that. It's important to run the year-end reports and reconcile reports prior to closing uh, the GP, the fixed asset module. As I mentioned earlier, with newer versions of GP, the analytical accounting module is included in the general ledger close, so there's no specific uh, close steps for analytical accounting. If this is the first time you're closing analytical accounting on the newer version of GP, it'll prompt you to move some data to history before the system will allow you to close that year. We encourage you to review the setup of your uh, analytical accounting options window prior to closing for the first time. If you have used, uh, if you use analytical accounting and there are questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to walk through the, that with you. All right, on the general ledger side, uh, the closing should be formed uh, only after all of the other modules have been closed first. As I mentioned earlier, this is your last chance to kind of double check that all of your accounts have been set up with the correct you know, account type, balance sheet, or profit and loss. Much easier, again, I just encourage you, much easier to catch that on the front end than to see something that's posted wrong throughout the year and then uh, catch it on the year and close. Again, take a backup. If you have any questions, please contact your Turnsoft team. We'll be happy to walk through that uh, with you. Now, another key step here prior to running the close routine is double check that your GL account is set up and ensure that proper retained earnings account is selected. So you do that here within your general ledger setup window. And then you see in yellow up uh, highlighted there, that's the retained earnings account that you're using there. When the general ledger is closed, all profit and loss accounts are rolled into retained earnings and all balance sheet accounts are rolled into the beginning balance for that account. There's an option to select the inactive accounts and no balance and no historical transactions can be removed. So uh, be aware of that, select that if needed. And then finally, the year uh, that was just closed is marked as, as historical. And the fiscal period tables are updated and marked in that year as historical. Now, once the closed process is run, you can save your year report as needed. Finally, it's important to mention uh, in the other areas, once you have completed your general ledger close, go ahead into your fiscal period and uh, lock that down so that no uh, users can enter into that period mistakenly. Now, in the unfortunate event that something does go wrong during your close, you find an account that's been marked incorrectly or something didn't process correctly, you can uh, undo or reverse the year in closing. So to do that, you would go into the year in closing option, and there you see at the bottom, reverse historical year. The other option to do that if you're not comfortable doing this way is you can always uh, load the backup that you took prior to doing your in close 
and then reperform those steps as needed. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions. I see a question about sending the slides out. We have to do that, send that to you. Um, don't see any other questions uh, related to the webinar that we just went over for the GP year in close. Um, again, we wish you a happy close, happy year in. If there is anything that comes up, don't hesitate to give us a call. We'll be happy to jump in. Uh, it's much easier to catch something or address something initially than to wait uh, until right before year end if you have any questions. So, again, good luck. Have a great day, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you.